welcome to the Holiday and Cruise Clinic. I'm Gemma Gofton with another edition of the programme that aims to make your next cruise or holiday as problem free and relaxing as possible. So if you have a holiday, cruise or travel related question, here's how to get in touch. To leave a question on our viewer hotline, call 0871 423 4444. Calls cost 10p a minute from a BT landline and calls from other networks and mobiles may vary. Write on our Facebook wall or tweet us, just search Holiday and Cruise Channel. Send a message through our website www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk forward slash clinic. Or write to us at the Holiday and Cruise Channel, Cavendish House, Brighton Road, Liverpool, L22 5NG. Now, something in recent years that's made holidaying more and more affordable to us all is the advent of low-cost air travel. And I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that EasyJet are one of the biggest and most popular budget airlines. In less than 20 years, they've grown to become Europe's leading airline, operating on over 600 routes across more than 30 countries, and in 2014, carried a record-breaking 64.7 million passengers. And I'm delighted to be joined now by good friend of the programme, EasyJet UK Commercial manager Ali Gaywood. Ali, they're amazing statistics, we will come back to those, but what has the airline been up to since we last spoke? Oh gosh, it's been a really busy year. We've been um, announcing some new routes. The newest one that will be starting summer 15 is Eswira in Morocco. Es oh, I was glad you told me where it was, <laughs> no idea. It's on the Atlantic coast of Morocco, so it's a big surfing paradise, lots of um, sand yachting, that type of thing, surfing as well, as well, um, as, well as being a great golfing area of Morocco, so somewhere completely new for us. Um, plus, as, as is our strategy, we've been joining all the dots on our network with adding some more routes, so around 750 routes will be flying this summer. My goodness, 750. Um, so people who, who travel with EasyJet, they know the service we can expect, but for those who haven't, what, what can they expect? Well, I think the key thing for us is real customer focus, um, you know, the customer experience, trying to do things which um, improve the experience for them. I mean, around um, 15,000 of our passengers now of the 65 million that we carry, but around 15,000 travel over 40 times a year with us. No. And we have a, around 5,000 who last year travelled over 60 times with us. So I think the key thing is we're seeing Passengers come back to us more and more often. We're very focused on, as I say, customer service, but also on-time performance, but also other things that make travelling more easy for customers. Um, through our mobile app, which has now been downloaded by millions and millions of passengers, we will let them know everything that's happening with their flights, particularly in the winter, you know, maybe where there's some disruption. What's happening with their flight? If there is going to be a delay, how long it might be, but also then if in the, the instance that perhaps they're going to have to be rebooked onto another flight because that disruption is going to be quite long winded, then it enables them to actually self manage that. They can book their onward flight or maybe the hotel. Obviously, we'll, we'll pick up the cost for that if, if we're responsible, rather than having to queue at the sales desk at the airport with every other passenger that was on board the plane. And that's the frustrating bit. Just out of interest, uh, out of the people that, that continue to travel with you, you know, on yearly, I mean, that's just an amazing statistic. Do you get feedback from them? And what is it that they say that they enjoy most about being with you? Well, I think it's the fact that, um, and yes, we, we do get feedback. We actually um, go out of our way to talk to them because it's really important that we understand from their perspective what's important to them. Um, so, you know, it, it's customer service. It, the, the key thing for them is flying them on time, to the destinations and the airports that they want to fly to. So it's flying to primary airports rather than an airport that may be 100 odd miles away. It's flying at the times of the day or the days of the week that they want to go on. But also it's, um, uh, we, we've been working with some of these most frequent flyers uh, and we just launched before Christmas a frequent flyer product. Um, it's a, a, for, for frequent flyers and basically whilst it's not offering it in, in the same way that some traditional airlines may have offered air miles, that type of thing, but it's giving them some of the additional flexibility and 
contactability to EasyJet that they so desperately want. And I guess their feedback is invaluable, really, isn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Because if you're getting it right for them. Now, we chatted about, you touched on, rather, Morocco <laughs> as a new destination. Anywhere else exciting? Well, Morocco is the brand new destination, and the rest for us is really um, sort of joining the dots. So we added, uh, we've added flights from both Gatwick and Belfast up to Iceland um, because of massive demand, and also actually from Geneva into Iceland. Uh, we've added flights to Bordeaux, from places like Glasgow and Belfast, added Belfast to Jersey, we'll be launching in the summer um, Bristol to the Isle of Man, um, plus adding capacity into places like Madeira, um, more flights into other European markets, both for business and for leisure. What I was going to say about the leisure side of that is that it actually is opening up places that we've, we've never heard of or been to before, which is not a bad thing. No, absolutely. And I think the thing is, you know, outside the core holiday markets, the Spanish Costas, the Algarve, places like that, the Balearics, people are looking for different and new places to go to. Um, you know, we, we, as, as a nation, we want to try different holiday destinations all of the time. New experiences like Marrakesh, like Tel Aviv. Um, and have you tried and tested Marrakesh? That's the important thing. I have indeed. It's oh, you're such a trooper. <laughs> you really are. I know, it's a tough job. Someone has to do it. Fascinating place. You've got the, you know, it's a sort of tale of two cities. You've got the old wall town, the Medina, um, with, with these wonderful little boutique-y um, accommodation down these little winding alleyways. And then outside that, you've got the luxury five-star resort hotels with all of the spas. Amazing golfing destination. And would you suggest, or if somebody was asking you for an exciting summer destination for 2015, would you suggest it and recommend it? I think I think Morocco is is it's a year-round destination. Oh, it can it? get jolly hot in in peak of summer, so it's possibly somewhere where you want to go in you know spring, autumn, and even through the winter for some winter sun, because in January last week there were people um, there sunbathing by the pool. I'm although it gets me jealous now. <laughs> although it gets cooler in the evening, um, but in terms of summer destinations, I mean I think the most popular markets are places like obviously the Balearics and and the Spanish Costas. Um, but places like Malta and the beautiful, beautiful island of Gozo, just off Malta, Cyprus. Um, but as I say, places like Israel are becoming more and more popular, but particularly for under 35s and also for the young people looking for um, festivals and music, Croatia too. I've heard about Croatia and about how exciting it is uh, and affordable. Once you're there as well, it's, it's an affordable place, isn't it? Oh, definitely. It's a stunning country. It's so pretty with, with a, a huge raft of islands all down the coast. It, it's great for sailing. It's great for uh, land-based holidays, for exploring. Uh, the cities of, of Dubrovnik and Split, um, just full of history, are so full of charm. They're lovely. So that's the, the summer destinations that you would recommend. That it, it might be a bit out there for people, something a little bit different. Now, my New Year's resolution is because I visit the same places in the UK all the time. I go to London, I go to Edinburgh. Um, there are so many places in between. So what about travelling domestically in, within the UK? Obviously people do it for business, uh, but what about doing it for leisure as well? Well, I can thoroughly recommend places like Northern Ireland, you know, fly to Belfast, go and see Giants Causeway, the Titanic Quarter, all the developments that are going on there. Um, Jersey is proving incredibly popular. We're adding more and more service down there. Um, the Isle of Man too, particularly in the summer for outdoors, if you like cycling and hiking, sailing again. Um, there, there are a whole host of wonderful places in this country to go to. Newquay too, if you want to go surfing. And I think one of the things that we don't understand about um, Cornwall and Newquay is that um, within just a few short miles of Newquay Airport, I believe there are something like five Michelin star restaurants. There are actually. I went, I went last last year and they were amazing. I didn't go in any of those, obviously, but I, I saw them. So, yeah, it's a very foody place, that's Definitely. for sure. Um, let's talk about the fleet. Anything exciting to tell us about the fleet and what's going on with it? Well, obviously, we have a new aircraft order. We topped, in fact, we topped up the order by an additional 27 aircraft last year. So that's going to take us from the 250 that we are now to around 316 aircraft by two, um, 2019. Um, but I think the key thing for us is we're working very closely to reduce emissions. We already um, emit 
uh, or a passenger flying on one of our aircraft, they are responsible for around 22% fewer carbon emissions than a passenger flying the same type of aircraft on any other airline. But as part of the fleet, we will also be taking delivery of the new Air Airbus A320neo aircraft, which have another 13-15% to 15 less emissions than the current fleet do. And actually that's hugely important now for people, isn't it, when you are booking flights, people are quite conscious about it. Yeah, we're a very responsible nation, so people really want to know about that. But we're also innovating in terms of the way that we, we look after our aircraft too, um, and, and again try and improve efficiency. We've got new lightweight seats on board, even the trolleys that the cabin crew have, um, you know, the drinks and the, the, the tax-free services on, new lightweight trolleys, um, so lots of innovations. But then we're trialling um, drones. Uh, as part of our engineering, so we have drones that fly around the aircraft um, overlooking them to see for any problems when they're on the ground. Our engineers are trialling some virtual reality glasses um, so that the image that they're seeing that then gets transmitted directly back to our engineering base at headquarters. My goodness, there's so much more that goes into it all than, we, than booking a holiday and just getting on a flight, isn't there? We're going to have a quick break. Bear with us and don't go anywhere. Plenty more questions. Now, a bit of a leap to cruising, but if you're new to cruising and you want to fly out to the heart of the sun in a flight cruise, then this is our first time guide to cruise holidays. It's well worth asking for because it's absolutely free of charge. Just give us a call. 0871 423 444. Calls will cost 10p a minute from a BT landline and other networks and mobiles may vary. You can also ask for a copy through our website www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk and whilst you're asking for this, we'll take a quick break. See you shortly. Welcome back to the Holiday and Cruise Clinic, where in today's programme we're jetting across Europe with leading budget airline EasyJet and Ali Gaywood is still with me. Now we were chatting about all things exciting and innovative, drones and spectacles that can probably see into the future, I've no idea, um, but what about new and important innovations moving forward for us passengers? Well there are a couple of things, on the website we've now launched Flight Tracker so you can get real time imagery of where your aircraft is, uh, so if you're sitting at an airport, um, killing time at the gate um, you can see you know when the plane's coming in and landing but also through the mobile app which has been downloaded by so many passengers um, constant ongoing innovations um, one of the things we do is now that if you're traveling overseas and you know how you have to give your passport information and we all fumble over you know are we putting the right right number in are we getting the detail right now you can take a photograph of that page in your passport and the app will automatically upload that data into your booking that is a very good idea. I only did that this week and I'm, I'm checking and double checking and then checking again because you think if I get one thing wrong on here, you know, once you're putting in your number and everything, it's, it's a bit panicky, isn't it? Um, so let's move on now to talking about your peers. And, and is it important to be sort of recognised by them and how you're put up against them? Oh, very definitely. I mean, we've, we've won a bunch of different awards, Best Low Cost Carrier, Best Airline in Europe, even Best Airline Award. Um, if you think EasyJet as an airline, we're only in our 19th year. We brought low cost flying to Europe. Um, we're the fastest growing airline in Europe. Um, so to win all of these awards as well is hugely gratifying because at the end of the day, we want our customers to know that flying with us is going to be a good experience. Now, it is a good experience for lots of people who don't mind flying. However, there are people out there who actually don't book holidays and really are never going to see the rest of the world because they're so scared of flying. What would you say to them? Well, flying, of course, is the safest form of travel and we're, we're always constantly innovating to make it safer. But we launched a couple of years ago a programme aimed specifically for those travellers who are frightened of flying. Even those who will reluctantly fly or those who've never flown before because of their fear. Called We call it Fearless Flyer. And in 2015, we'll be offering 10 of these courses all around the UK at all of our base airports. Um, and effectively, it, it's a two-part course on the Friday afternoon. There's a bit of a classroom session. We have a psychologist there talking about overcoming your fears. 
Um, we also have one of our most senior pilots there explaining how aeroplanes work. And then the following morning, we'll take them on a flight. Um, they can take a companion, so they can squeeze that hand next to them really hard. We have extra crew on board. The pilot the whole time is explaining what various noises are. Um, the crew are talking to them, uh, allaying any fears that they may have. But the pilot will, will automatically try and look for things like turbulence um, and other things so that they can experience everything they might do on on trips in the future, just to explain that it's a perfectly normal part of flying. We've put around 1,900 people through the training course already, um, and the feedback's been wonderful, so we'll be looking to do more and more of these courses. Because I think it is a shame for people. Um, mm. I have a friend who's absolutely so fearful, and it, it does put her off travelling, so great mm -hmm. idea. Um, I've got to touch on your new ad. Happy Bums. Yes, Happy Bums. A bit cheeky, I was going to say. <laughs> ah, excuse the pun. Um, where did that come from? Well, I think, you know, EasyJet's always been a little bit of a challenger and, you know, we've always been a little bit tongue-in-cheek in, in our advertising. People expect that from EasyJet. So I th think, you know, we, we've last year we went through a process with our advertising of trying to explain to people some of our core values, things like you can change to an earlier flight for free, the fact that we fly to main airports rather than ones that are a long way away. But this year we decided to return to our core and, and just be a little bit fun and, and, as I say, try and, you know, try and lighten things a little bit. But also, you know, showing the, the range of destinations and the fact that we are very affordable. And I guess it's good to stand out, especially in these months, isn't it? Because everybody's holidays and advertising, so something a little bit different. Um, so because we are booking our uh, summer holidays at the moment and looking ahead towards it, um, you might just want a little bit of sun earlier on. So do we have sort of year-round destinations that are accessible? You know, we're going to get there, we're not going to spend a fortune and um, we can sneak a little holiday in. Well, I mentioned Morocco. Um, places like Malta and Cyprus and the Canaries through the winter, Israel too. But also, I mean, uh, places like Sicily, uh, one of these emerging destinations, this a bit like Iceland for, for the great outdoors. Sicily is becoming very popular and we're adding more and more flights down there. Um, it's apparently a foodie paradise. I'll certainly be going later on this year to try it. It does sound very exciting. Um, and what about um, if you're, you know, you're wanting to ski, you wanting to be outdoorsy, you want to be adventurous? I put myself in that category. Well, obviously, Iceland um, is, is, you know, it's a great holiday destination in the winter. You can go snowmobiling, cross-country skiing, um, see the thermal spas. But then in the summer, you can go horse riding on the beach. Um, you can go swimming in the thermal spas when it's not quite so cold outside, whale watching. Um, Morocco too, so you, could, you can go up into the Atlas Mountains, which are beautiful. But then you've got, you know, places like Geneva, which is a gateway to wonderful mountains um, throughout the summer for cycling. Um, just a whole range of different destinations. There's something for everyone. And I, get, I think maybe five years ago, we, we just wouldn't have been talking about places like this. So have you noticed a change in trends and what the customer wants? Well, I think what we're doing now is rather than in the past, we'd maybe take just one two week holiday in the summer, or if you were lucky, perhaps you'd have a, a winter break, a weekend break to a city or a ski trip or whatever it might be. People now are taking far more frequent breaks, maybe for less time and wanting more and more experiential type of holidays. So going to places like Iceland for, for a long weekend or even to a sun destination like a Malta, the latter, somewhere like that in the winter. So it, people are taking lots and lots more holidays through the year. Uh, uh. and, and is that because it's more affordable or is that because we've decided we need more holidays? I don't... Well, the, there's more economic confidence out there, so I think people are feeling that they can take more trips. But yes, I think because of the advent of low-cost flying and these destinations being much easier to reach and more affordable, therefore we are going away much more. You know, if you think the average cost of a, a ticket on EasyJet is somewhere in the region of around £65 now, you know, it makes these destinations much easier to get to. I mean, £65 is a train ticket, really, isn't yeah. it, at, across to London? Yeah. Uh, sorry, to London. Um, what about... Now, this is a self-indulgent question for me because um, I, I, we want to do a city break uh, somewhere we've never been before. So for you, what would, would be your ultimate uh, little city break? Oh, golly, that, that's tough. I guess it, a lot of it depends on, on time of year that you want to go to. Um, I mean, places like Milan are stunning year-round. Um, 
I love Valletta in um, Malta um, for Cafe Society. Um, but then you've got, you know, the places like Stuttgart, where we've just started flying to, good old favourites like Paris, Brussels too, where you can sit in the square and particularly as a woman drink all those lovely flavoured beers. Oh, there's just so much to do. Or then in the winter, you know, before Christmas, going to the, the, the Christmas markets throughout all of Europe. Vienna, the charm, the beauty, go see the Spanish riding school and um, listen to some wonderful music. And these are all now places that are very accessible to us now. Um, now, world records. <laughs> <laughs> this is always makes me laugh, this question, but go on, tell us what uh, you got well, up your sleeve. We, we, we love looking for our world records. Um, we're, we're supporters of trying to make a national William Shakespeare Day because I'm not sure if you're aware, but he was both born and died on the same date. Uh, and so we're, we're, we're supporting the campaign to to um, notify him and have a William Shakespeare Day. So we performed last summer the highest ever uh, performance of a William Shakespeare play on one of our aircraft. And then just before Christmas, uh, and we broke another record, and we do have the Guinness Book of World Records to, to uh, prove this, um, the highest carol concert ever performed in the world. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. So anything else on in the pipeline? We might be able to get involved in it. This is where I'm trying to go. In November, we'll be entering our 21st year. So as we come of age, you can bet your life will be looking for something more. OK, fabulous. Now, let's just sum up for people. Um, brilliant destinations for summer 2015. Go. Oh, gosh. Well, I mentioned Sicily, Catania. Um, uh, Cyprus, um, the, the, the whole of the Med, um, anywhere you want to go, but then Croatia and I would say Israel too. And because you are well travelled, you have to be for this job, where if you, if I had to say you've got to go to one place this summer, where would it be? Iceland. I, see now that, I've been in the winter, um, but you, you, you assure me that there'll be nice weather there and you can do outdoorsy things. And... You may not get a suntan, uh, <laughs> you may get a bit of windburn, um, but in terms of just a whole summer experience, the weather's probably similar to a warm spring day here in the UK, um, but great outdoors, great, fresh air like you've never experienced, and you know, swimming in rivers, uh, with, but which are warm because of the thermal spas, wonderful food, wonderful, wonderful scenery. It's got to be Iceland year round. And uh, your, your personal favourite city break? I'm really putting you on now. Um, my favourite city break. Fly to Milan and go to Bergamo. <laughs> uh, you're just saying words we've never even heard before. <laughs> What's so appealing? Uh, well, it's, it's, um, Bergamo is actually a, um, a, a satellite part of Milan. Um, so you'd fly to, to one of the two Milan airports that we serve. Um, it's a walled city on a hill. You go up on a funicular cobbled streets, street jesters, Italian food to die for. Oh, it's just charming. Great fun. And just before we finish, the, what, is the, what do you think you offer that other airlines don't offer? If somebody sat there thinking, I'm going to book, but I'm not sure who to book with, what will they get with you? Oh, well, we make travel easy and affordable. We're doing everything with the customer in mind and flying them to where they want to go to. Fabulous. Well, I couldn't sum it up better than that. Thank you so much, Ali. It's always a pleasure having you in. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I've got to tell you about this. It's our first time guide to cruise holidays. It's absolutely free of charge. Give us a call 0871 423 444. Calls will cost 10p a minute from a BT landline and other networks and mobiles may vary. Don't forget, you can also ask for a copy through our website www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk where you can also get in touch with your questions for future programmes. Fortunately, that's all we've got time for on today's edition of the Holiday and Cruise Clinic. My huge thanks to Ali Gaywood from EasyJet and thanks to you for watching. I'll see you next time.